Mayor. I'd like to point out that Vaughn today is uh, is taping, is filming the event, and some of that will go on, on our website, as well as reporters are are shooting shooting this and uh, recording this for uh, a feature in uh, in Vaughn today. So all the citizens of, of Vaughn, including Thornhill, will will see a. a an extended, uh, a detailed report on uh, this event and what the candidates had to say today, and your questions. So we'll go back to microphone number one. All right. So uh, this question is directed to Mr. Kent also. Uh, party A Party's platform is to impose much stricter and harsher punishments on young offenders. Uh, what proof do you have, or is there any proof that a much longer sentence uh, will prevent juvenile crime? Thank you. Good question. Uh, I, I think just to finish your question, uh, it should be pointed out that the, the, the government has put uh, tens of million dollars as well into rehabilitation and redirection of at-risk youth away from uh, a life of, of crime, uh, and particularly violent crime. Um, the Young Offenders Act will be replaced, and it will be replaced uh, after October the 14th. Uh, because there are, although only a small number of 14-year-olds who should be removed from society and institutionalized, they are, and we have seen in the GTA, uh, those who have been uh, arrested uh, for one violent crime and placed under uh, the highly ineffective um, uh, uh, penalty of house arrest, have very often reoffended any number of times in Toronto, and I don't, I've lost track of the count, but in the last two years there have been at least three incidents where a young offender, uh, 14 years of age, uh, has been released into parental care. He left that care uh, and reoffended with uh, with tragic consequences. So it's not all it's not all young uh, young offenders, but certainly there are some that must be removed from uh, from our streets. Incarcerating 14-year-olds uh, uh, year and treating them as adults is, is not the answer to the problem that we have. I think we really need to take a step back and look at a child poverty because I believe that's the root of uh, juvenile criminality. We have a child poverty rate in Canada of 15 percent. I mean, that's shameful for a country that is as rich as ours is. In 1989, all the major parties agreed to reduce child poverty. So in 1989, the rate was 15 percent. Today, what is the rate? 15 percent. We have not achieved anything. And this is where we need to tackle the problem to end that cycle. This, the cycle continues. If we can get to the kids early, give them a good education, a good nutrition, they will perform in school and they will have more opportunities in their lives. Thank you. Conservatives want to have more police and more security guards around corners. They, they talk about the, the mean streets of Thornhill here on New Westminster and Clark. Uh, well, I, I tell you, this is the area that I lived in for a long time. I used to pass St. Elizabeth. And that's not what we need. We don't need more police. What we need is more community centers. We need more active things for people to do. I mean, the furthest community center is what, Garnet, and on the other side is Dufferin. It seems the only place really for you to hang out is to go to promenade, you know, which many of us do. But, you know, is that is that really the best solution? So we need to uh, give alternatives to youth. We need to give programs and services and distract them and, and educate them and involve them and have do, them do something fun. That's the kind of solutions we need here in Thornhill. Public is absolutely paramount. So you do have to have tougher sentences. The liberals brought in mandatory minimums originally, but they do. Our laws do need to be uh, intelligent and effective. And some of the laws that we're talking about here, the conservatives again, are very reflective of what hasn't worked in the United States. And so we do need a comprehensive approach to safety. Tougher laws are appropriate. The judges now do have flexibility on uh, giving tougher sentences to younger um, younger adults and teenagers and youth offenders as well, too. And I think the conservatives forget about the role of the judiciary. They do not seem to have respect for it. They seem to want to replace it in many cases. So it's Bye. very important that we do have sentences to fit the crime, but also to be truly effective. We tried to fast-track some of the crime bills, and their answer was to parole government, and also to gut the gun registry, the long gun for the chief of police say is very important to ensure that there is safety, and we will ban assault uh, weapons, military assault weapons. 
So this is all part of a comprehensive approach, not just a one-dimensional approach, which will not be effective in increasing the safety of the Canadians. Well, I'm certainly aware of the role of the judiciary. Um, I'm privileged to have one of my siblings who sits as a federal court judge. And the problem, the reason that we need to replace the Young Offender Act with stiffer legislation is that judges are forced to follow precedents. So no matter how harsh the original sentencing judge may treat a, a worthy young offender of a serious crime, uh, chances are, the odds are, it will be thrown out on appeal or reduced because of precedence. So that's, that's why we do need to replace the, the Young Offenders Act. I agree with Norbert. Uh, the big problem in, uh, in our society is child poverty, and we do have to focus, as the Conservative government has, with tens of millions of dollars on ways of, uh, of getting those at-risk youth and uh, preventing them choosing the, the wrong sort of life.